Hey. Benny, you're enjoying yourself, huh? Yeah. Yeah, checking some. Watch yourself, man. How's it going? Sudah makan. Sudah makan. Sudah makan. Tunggu je. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our uh, alternative investment talk show today, and it's about watches. Um, well, we are still waiting for people to join in. Uh, we have about 100 people now on Facebook. Well, for those who are just joining, welcome to our uh, investors' copy time. At um, it's a Friday evening, right? So um, we are more casual, all right? And uh, yeah, once again, I have my two, uh, two hey, one one Swiss, one uh, one Japan. <laughs> I, I see. I've only one hand. <laughs> I, uh, okay, I, I'm I'm sure Michael will know what watch is this, right? Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, one. Yes, that's for sure. That's a very classic silicon bull head. Uh, previously uh, worn by a very famous uh, Hollywood actor uh brad pitt so so i think the price has uh increased tremendously over the years okay so the the, the first thing that you know when you meet uh, dato michael right the first thing he will notice is your watch <laughs> right yeah yeah, yeah yeah i go with I, mean, I think that's a very pick that very good pick up conversations man i i i use this to pick out one of the uh um ceo uh of all the public uh this company ceo so you roughly cannot switch organizations uh so also when I was at the uh, company's uh, open house, uh, right open house. So uh, my first conversation with the CEO is uh, I look at his watch and says that this is not a uh, normal Patek fillet. This is a oversized vintage Patek fillet. Then uh, Nato Sri was like, wow, okay. Then I go deep with all the information. And that's how we started the deal. Yeah, so if you have knowledge in watches, it's, it's, uh, it's good to uh, open, uh, right? Opening uh, for a conversation. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so what happens when you see what happens when you see someone who's, uh, uh, you know, wearing a Daniel Wellington watch? <laughs> I'm, I'm, going to be, I'm, going to be, I'm going to have a lot of haters outside, man. <laughs> if I say something wrong about this brand. Uh, so to be honest, I think, I think there's nothing wrong with this brand. Um, actually, there's a lot of different different brands uh, uh, around the market, and uh, it depends on uh, what type of watches actually fits into uh, different people's needs. So, so I think that uh, one of the uh, one of the questions that uh, in our previous copy time, uh, thank you for inviting me, Anthony, um, is uh, why um, why we still need to wear a watch when now you have a smartwatch or even you have your handphone telling you what time is it. Um, I used to have the same. I used to have the same idea, um, uh, but until about twelve years ago, uh, when I gotten uh, this poison uh, watch, Russian poison from uh, my friend, and he's a friend also, uh, Mr. Paul Gui is the MD of uh, um, CNB Securities. Uh, um, then I I get to appreciate watch itself. So for me, actually, watch is not just a tool to tell time. It actually acts. Uh, to, first of all, is uh, I really, really love watch. Um, investment comes last. And then secondly, watches actually helps me really, really open a lot of doors in uh, business. Um, 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 especially when you wear the same model uh, with the person that you are going to talk to, uh, to open a business deal or business case, that helps extremely a lot, right? And uh, last but not least is actually uh, the watches that you're wearing actually tells you what type of character you are it's like mm. what type of car actually you drive actually speaks about what type of character character you are so watch is a very very good conversation starter and also give you a hint of like i think that many you know that uh, our parents time until now when people talk about rolex it's always a old man watch people say the old man only wear rolexes so when you get older you find that the reason why they say it's an old man watch is because it is um it is nothing fancy. It is very, it's very stable. It's like a gold. It's like a currency. And to be honest, uh, it's a bitter. And the maintenance uh, of Rolex is pretty low. So, so now I maybe I get older. I become older now, Benny. So I, I'm appreci appreciating that brand a bit more compared to last time. Yeah, I still remember because you are the one who rachoned me in watches as well, right? 
<laughs> and yeah, I remember you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter is a nice one to welcome. Yeah. And I still remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, I still remember you wearing all these even old uh, Rolex and old, you know, all the dress watches. Uh, uh, it looks like damn uncle, right? <laughs> and I was, I was, I was yeah. really wearing a wearing a smart watch, and I said, ah, yeah, you know, this one not for me, lah. You know? uh, but like I said, if you <laughs> once you start to read deeper into the watches, and you know, especially guys, lah, right? We always like mechanical stuff, mm -hmm. right? Cars, yes. watches, yes. and of course, girls, lah, right? Um, <laughs> but oh, yeah, that's anything, that's <laughs> anything that's mechanical fancies us, lah. Right? So. Yeah, so I mean, you used to wear smart watches, especially the young generation, right? They like to wear smart watches and, and, and so on and so forth. It, because they say, like, you know, you can actually get all the functions in one watches. I mean, who would want to wear a watch watch like this, right? I mean, so, so, Uncle. Yeah. <laughs> no way, man. That's a jam. <laughs> but, 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 but seriously, when you grow older, uh, Benny, when you grow older, or um, when you maybe move on to your second phase or another phase of your life, you will try to appreciate a bit more fine things in your life. I think uh, uh, just I just uh, received a, a message uh, from another uh, guy. Uh, thanks, thanks for those who uh, last week after the show that uh, find me on my Facebook and PM me. I hope I've answered some of your questions. But those questions that I, I didn't manage to answer, please um, come in with a lot more uh, questions today. I'll try my best to answer uh, them one by one. Uh, but definitely, if you ask me, um, it, it really it really comes with uh, a certain phase of your life. It doesn't mean that you only start to appreciate watches when you get old. But when you reach a certain phase of your life, you want some fine things on your life. And um, if that fine things itself eventually helps you to make money, I think watch is pretty a good investment. So um, I think Benny, if you can remember last week, we have uh, we have actually shown that Night Frank has a um, luxury investment index. Right. So, so I mean, there are some people who call me and say, Mike, uh, I think from the index itself, it shows that actually um, whiskey and red wine and also uh, vintage cars fetch better returns compared to watches. And why not? You are, why you are not talking about uh, those uh, assets other than just uh, watches? I think maybe this one, Benny, can share a bit of sentiment with me. You see a bottle of whiskey or a bottle of, uh, of, of red wine, once you drink, uh, after a few hours, uh, the drink will come up in the toilet. So given a bottle of 30,000 whiskey or 50,000 whiskey, um, you, you can't actually keep it very long if you want to enjoy it. If you want to enjoy it, then you can't actually enjoy uh, the money because you're going to enjoy the things, right? And you can't, it's very hard for you to keep on keeping from generations to generations. And that is why um, Pate Philip, uh, yeah, their, their tagline of the business is very, very good uh, because they sell very uh, expensive, fine watch. Um, their watches is equivalent to about one condominium or even one house. Um, the tagline is, is you have never actually owned a Pate Philip. You are merely looking after it for your next generation. So yeah. to take care of a watch is um, comparatively easier compared to uh, whiskeys and red wine because you need to have the right uh, equipments, uh, the, the storage to, to make sure that those uh, those uh, liquids are very safely and are, are been taken care of very well. And whereas for vintage car, I have started some vintage car collections uh, a few years ago, I think together with Paul. Um, the problem with vintage watches and uh, vintage cars is because these the spare parts. So I, I remember we have to travel all the way to UK and carry a 50 kilo luggage full of spare parts and bring it back to Malaysia because you can't get that spare parts anymore in Malaysia. But for watches, it is uh, pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple. You can get a lot of uh, spare parts in Malaysia. You can still get a lot of spare parts in Malaysia uh, from the authorized dealer or even from not the authorized dealer. And uh, you'll also save the problem of carrying very heavy spare parts around. So mm. to me, the cost of actually maintaining an asset like watch is, uh, is, is relatively low. So comparable to the rest of other assets like wine and whiskeys and uh, cars uh, that is also one of the reasons why i choose to go to watches and not the rest of the assets yeah so so today's today we're going to talk about watches as an investment so uh, it's going to give us a, a, a more in-depth uh, view on how you can look uh, for watches or how you want to identify watch whether it's in, you know in, you can actually invest in this kind of watches yeah, so uh, before we go there, um, you know, uh, I also want to share a sentiment, right? 
uh, talking about watcher sentiment and talking about uh, easy maintenance. Now, I, I remember when I started uh, watch collection, you know, when I was in a room, uh, my wife caught me doing this, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> 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 I'm sure all the work that you see as you have this, and then you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it was, it was quite awkward. Like, you know, they thought I'm doing, but um, no one's I showed that you really have, because the old watches, you don't have that, that winding. And uh, it's, it's, I mean, you have only you only shake it, right? Especially like those Japanese Seiko watches, automatic right. watches, right? right? Uh, so you you know, they got no choice but to do this. <laughs> So that's that's one, one, one part now. <laughs> okay, so um, now for for those who just join us, we have this uh, investors copy time on a daily basis, and the whole thing about this investors copy time daily at eight pm is to basically talk about investments, right? So most of the time we talk about stock investments, uh, whether it's ETF. You know, we're gonna bring in quite a number of uh, other topics later on. Uh, you know about gold investments or even ETFs and futures, and uh, you know uh, now CFD has just launched. We're also going to bring in CFD guests here, right? And uh, we're going to keep you updated as well. So it's all about investment. It's all about how we actually make informed investment decisions, whether it's uh, stocks, whether it's futures, whether it's indices, whether other markets, whether it's watches, right? Or fine arts or or, or even wine, right? Uh, you, you need to be data-driven. And, and that's the reason why we, we started the show anyway. Okay, so investors copy time is on a daily basis, right? We're here every single day, okay? So now, um, Dato, maybe you want you have a uh, slides prepared for us, right? And you want to show us, uh, you know, uh, some stuff. Yes, um, I've cut down my slides compared to last week. I think uh, last week is uh really information overload. All right, cool. So uh, if you can look at this, is uh my first slides. Uh, this is part two. So these are the fifteen Q and A that actually um, this is a fifteen Q and A that actually uh, I've compiled for last week's. Um, for last week's uh, 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 Q&A. So uh, I won't go through them one by one because if I go through them one by one, I think it will take up a lot of uh, time. So I'll go through maybe a few of it. Um, but if you find that any of that 70 questions is uh, relevant to you and you want to ask, I'll be more than happy actually uh, to uh, answer it. So uh, as I mentioned, I think for uh, there's some recap, like question number three is uh, the watch industry a sunset industry? I think uh, in the previous presentations, we have actually shown that um, the sweet spot of a um, Swiss watch is actually at 3,000 Swiss francs. Um, the, 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 the watches that has been priced above 3,000 uh, Swiss francs has been growing very steadily even until last year. So sometimes this sort of question is, is pretty hard to answer. It depends on what type of, um, what type of uh, what type of watches you're looking at and also in what phases of life you are in. So, I mean, if you're talking about investable grade um, watches in this particular copy time talk, my answer to you is if you have selected the right brand and the right model, uh, I'm pretty confident that the price of that particular watch will actually go up in the long run, right? So that one is to answer uh, for question number three. And then uh, maybe also uh, I will answer some very uh, simple questions like does a watch comes with full set command higher price? So this is a very commonly asked questions in uh, the watch uh, investment uh, um, um, conversation. What does a uh, full set actually means? So which means that when you actually purchase a brand new watch, you will actually get the watch itself and then you will actually get a box, which is the watch box itself. And then actually the most important thing is the certificate of the watch. The receipt of the watch itself is not that important. The box of the watch itself is also not that important. The certificate itself actually plays a big role uh, to actually uh, uh, determine the price of a watch. Uh, uh, but, but don't worry, I, I mean that you will see actually there are a lot of watches outside uh, the pre-owned market that actually doesn't come with full set. I have invested uh, in watches that doesn't come with full set because um, if it's a real, if it's a genuine watch, um, the counterfeit watch just can't fade it, okay? So I just give an example of a Rolex. Um, their, their, their serial numbers is actually engraved in between the lugs of the watch itself. So uh, it's pretty, 
it's pretty hard for a counterfeit watch to come up with a zero running counterfeit Rolex, right? So first of all, um, yes, my answer is yes. Uh, a full set of a um, pre-owned watch actually fetch better price in terms of investment, but a, without a full set, the price of the watch, let me give you an example, let me give you a gauge number. You are looking at about um, a difference of close to approximately about 5% of the value itself, right? So it depends on how actually uh, you bargain uh, with the buyer and also you actually how you bargain that time when you sell the watch. So uh, and usually in Malaysia, when you want to buy a pre-owned watch or you want to sell a pre-owned watch, uh, the boss itself will actually ask you for your IC for a copy. So uh, to me, it's pretty safe uh, to invest in a um, watch if it's not a full set, but it has to be from, from a reputable uh, shop. I mean, that one is pretty much important. And then uh, one of the other one of the questions that I will cover today, uh, number 15 and number 16 is, what is the hierarchy of watch brands? I think last week, uh, Peter actually uh, texted me the next day and showed me that it's a hierarchy of brands itself uh, and, and asked me why I didn't present it. Um, the, the reason I didn't want to start with a hierarchy of watch brands is because I do not want to give um, newbies, or I don't want to give people who want to buy a watch starting with the impression that I want to start from which level. So when it comes to watch itself, I believe that for you to love the watch is very, very important first. Then only it comes to hierarchy. And usually the hierarchy of the watch brands itself might give you a, a wrong impression where actually you might think that the higher uh, the watch brand in the hierarchy, uh, the second value might be better. Uh, the answer is no. Okay, the answer is no. Uh, when uh, the, 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 the watch brand goes higher in the watch brand's hierarchy, which I'm going to show you later, it doesn't guarantee at all, okay, whether that is an investable grade uh, watch or not, right? And then I think number point number 16, uh, investment uh, in gold, and watch which one is a better investment. I'm going to show you a bit of data uh, in the second page. So uh, Benny, uh, is there any more questions that uh, our viewers actually view from this 17 and they want to ask a bit more from that? Hey Benny. Yeah, so you're also going to share, basically share with us later on how to look for watches uh, that, you know, there's a high chance of it going up like, in prices because you say it's not just it's not just based on hierarchy, right? Yes, 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 yes. It's not being hierarchy. I'll share with you a bit more later. Uh, there will be six tips I'll be sharing with those who wanted to start their watch portfolio. Uh, I'll be sharing in the next few slides. All right. Yeah, uh, we can go on. I think the questions are uh, people want to just know, you know, uh, the question that they ask here, maybe you can just uh, um, answer the questions first. Lah. Well, for the rest who have any questions, you can type down the questions in comments. Uh, even if you're on YouTube, uh, you can also just uh, ask us the questions. All right. Okay, Dato, you right. Can okay, so this next page actually shows that the gold price of the past 10 years from 20, 2010 all the way to 2020. So if you ask me that if you have actually bought a, bought a gold, Okay, uh, it depends on what type of gold. So if you speak to my mom, my mom will tell you that you're gonna buy gold, go just go to Pokong and buy some gold. Um, if you buy gold from um, jewelry shops like Pokong and the rest, I don't think that one is, uh, uh, is, is, is very right. It's a very right way to invest in gold because uh, I, I don't think you want to invest in gold where they have actually uh, add in the cost of the workmanship itself and then makes the price of the gold uh, much more expensive compared to the real gold price. So this goal, we are talking about the main goal itself. So looking at um, starting from 2020, you can you can look at the price of the gold itself is actually um, around um, 1100 or 1150. Okay, if you bought some gold uh, in 2010. And if you look at the price of the gold as of uh, this Monday, it is um, around 1700 um plus minus plus a bit right uh you, you can you can make a very simple uh calculation many that um 
your profit from gold for the past 10 years might give you almost close to close to maximum maybe 40 plus 40 percent um and if you remember i show you a chart of a submariner over the past 10 years uh and also night frag has also show you uh their index to track watches for the past 10 years the return itself is easily 60 percent so if you ask me um whether to invest in gold or invest in watch which is better my personal take is i will invest in watch is because i can enjoy and wear the watch for the past 10 years and at the end of 10 years i still make money right but whereas for gold uh, unless i go and buy from popong uh, if i just buy some gold uh, wafer or some gold bars i won't be able to carry or wear the gold bar walking around uh, i think chances of me being uh, being being robbed is very very high and it doesn't actually carry any uh it's not artistic and it won't have maybe it might create some conversation but, but i won't so so if you ask me in terms of return my answer is uh i will definitely choose watch uh over gold and looking at uh, the data itself uh i think a uh, watch has actually fetched a better return but again a uh, disclaimer when i when i talk about watch is those investable great watch it's not any other watches and second questions maybe uh some of the viewers might ask me hey mike so uh what about if i invest in a full gold watch so investing in watch is pretty um you, you you really have to understand the trend of the market as well investing in a full gold watch or a platinum watch or a white gold watch doesn't guarantee you very good return it gives you some return but it doesn't give you uh, the return as high as compared to the standard steel watch so, so the reason behind you might ask me hey, why i mean that um i thought gold is more uh expensive it's more precious uh the status is higher uh why not gold watches the price actually uh will shoot up uh even higher compared to standard steel watches it, it, the reason is simply because first i think the material of gold itself is it's not as hard as compared to a stainless steel watch. And if you have tried wearing a full gold watch on your wrist compared to a stainless steel watch, I think full gold watch is very heavy. It is very, very heavy and it is very inconvenient uh, if you are a very active person, if you are on the, on the go, uh, traveling around. And because uh, gold is not as hard, so when you hit some certain objects, it actually will create a lot of things and um you will actually have a lot of scratches on the watch itself so gold my gold is definitely the return of gold watches uh is not as high as compared to uh stainless steel stainless steel watch uh in another way also represents very um subtle because uh in the watch enthusiast community um there are two types one wants their watch to stand out with uh maximum diamonds and bling bling and the shape and the size uh, whereas there's another group who wants to be very understated they want they, they want their watch to be as low profile as as subtle as, as as possible and this group of investors actually form a bigger group of community in the watch collector or, or watch investment community itself many Okay, so uh, we go to some questions. Uh, there's one question here by Leon uh, Leon Chan. Okay, he said, if you already collected quite a number of watches, where would you recommend to store them or keep them? Okay, um, I have actually changed uh, the safe in my house three times. Um, from a very from from a very okay size to now uh, quite a quite a big big size, but. To be honest, I think that um, for everybody, I mean, if you want to just put your watches in a safe, I think that in Malaysia, uh, a lot of safe, uh, even my dad's safe, when I open it itself, that the moist, the moisture is still there. So you need to really, really, really actually take care of your safe. So first of all, uh, don't, don't just buy your watch and put it into the safe and 
open it once a year. Okay, I think you have to uh, open it maybe every few months. And second thing, you need to go and buy those, uh, um, how to use the word, uh, those, uh, those chemicals that you actually can buy from those uh, Mr. DIY or whatever to put it in to absorb the moisture uh, or absorb the water or the moist from the air itself to make sure that um, your safe is extremely dry and also uh, and that this won't actually uh, first uh, affect your dial of your watch and also it won't affect the movement uh, inside your watch itself. So uh, this is some tips. Uh, thanks. A very good question. Okay, there are questions about um you know the different type of watches maybe you want to explain the hierarchy or the type of watches first before you're going to answer the question so maybe give them an idea a bit first because they're asking about brands like panerai ubc and uh you know rolex so do, do you want to talk about that first or you want to answer the questions okay but benny the question is types of watches or brands of watches yeah so it's basically like uh you know can panerai or ulysi nadin increase in value Okay, so that is, uh, maybe we'll talk about that in the next slides, in the hierarchy itself. Yeah, so most of the questions, maybe you can you can um, uh, present that first, and then we'll answer that question. Sure, cool. Yeah. So, okay, this is the hierarchy of watch brands. I think a lot of you might see this uh, in the social media, okay, uh, recently. Um, uh, what the reason why I didn't present it last week is because, look at it itself, uh, there is watches from mid-range, to entry luxury watches, basic luxury, luxury watches, high-end watches, and ultra luxury watches. I think um, to segregate all these brands into different different tier, I some of the brands I don't really agree, but it this is uh, more or less a very, very uh, simple to look at. It's, 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 it's an okay, it's a okay hierarchy uh, to give uh, all of you an idea if you want to buy a certain brand where does the brand actually sits right so if you ask me let's look at ultra okay. luxury water, right? uh, sorry sorry i have to interrupt you for a while um you know the category like ultra luxury watches high-end watches luxury watches this is based on price or based on their legacy or based on their quality uh actually it's definitely it's based on price based on this chart itself it's based on price right okay. it, it doesn't mean that um if you're talking about legacy itself, I think Zenith shouldn't be in luxury watches. Right. If you're talking about if you're talking about heritage itself, Richard Richard Mill shouldn't be in ultra luxury watches. So this is purely determined by the price of the watch itself. So um, um, um so this this is okay. If you ask me now, let's look at ultra luxury watches. These are the brands that actually uh you can find uh in Malaysia in Star Hill itself. Uh, among the rest of the brands, okay. Um, to be honest, I've made some research. I, I myself, I have never owned any of uh, them in this category because, um, personally, I find that um, uh, I personally find that I like watches that has rich heritage. If you've been following me since last week and, to, and this week itself, I think heritage. Uh, of a watch comes number one to me if I want to spend money on a watch. So uh, Richard Mille is one of the watch that actually uh, some of their models uh, helps you to make some good money. But the rest of the brands itself, um, they are being priced very, very high in the retail market. But when it comes to um, selling it, you might, first of all, you, you, you find it very, very hard to sell to any of the watch um, um, um dealers in the market and even though if you manage to sell the watch uh, you might actually get a heavy losses you might incur heavy losses for those brands under ultra luxury watches itself so we move next to the high-end luxury watches so um, this okay i find that in this category you have a bit more uh we have a bit more uh, it's a bit more correct. So uh, I personally like the brand like uh, Vachron uh, a lot. I like uh, Pate Philippe a lot. I like uh, Jaeger a lot. I like uh, uh, Lange Onsone a lot. Um, AP, uh, I like a lot. So, but, but, but when it comes to investable grade, like I mentioned last week itself, 
uh, again, the status of the brands or uh, the, 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 the level of the brand in the hierarchy itself doesn't guarantee you anything at all. So if you just look at this category, the luxury and uh, high-end luxury watches itself, um, less, I think one of the users actually asked uh, Ulusin Nadine, right? Ulusin, I think Benny, you have one, right? So uh, this is this is a very good watch. Um, they are uh, they they crafted very very uh, well watch, and also uh, the price of this watch, if you are buying brand new, it is very very expensive. But when it comes to a pre-owned market, when you want to let it go to a dealer, not only in Malaysia or in other part of Malaysia itself, only Russia. This brand actually uh, will give you a better return. When I mean gives you a better return, it doesn't mean that it guarantee you profit. Meaning maybe you might suffer lesser losses in Russia if you sell to a watch dealer in Russia. And also, again, it depends on the model itself. So if you can manage to pick up a very nice uh in the deal in Malaysia very good very good uh very good condition itself if you like the watch uh with a very good price um you actually you can actually uh you can actually buy it for my personal point of view because uh you won't get this type of price uh in uh any part of the world you won't get it in singapore singapore price of this brand is also slightly higher than malaysia uh, i've never tried to see this brand in hong kong yet but I know that the brand has command a better price in Russia. So we go to some other uh, um, brands like Patek Philippe. Uh, I think this is something where uh, people also might get it uh, very confused that uh, might. So does it mean that this big brand, this name itself, Patek Philippe, um, any brands or any, sorry, any models under this brand, I just walk into the showroom, I purchase, I put it in my safe for the next uh, 10, 20 years. Boom, I went money. Again, brand itself is very important, but the model itself is also very, very important. So um, I think uh, under Pate Philippe, the sports model like uh, um, Nautilus and also uh, Aquanaut, uh, they have been enjoying a very good run since 2017. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, back in 2017, I've been offered a um, Pate Philippe uh, Nautilus blue face at about 180 grand. Uh, now is running at about 300 grand because the waiting list itself uh, has actually um, prolonged because suddenly there is a hype. And, and if you ask me the reason why there is suddenly a hype, it is not because suddenly there's a hype, because the price of other watches such as Rolex and AP is catching up very, very closely to Patek Philippe. So they have the, the market itself have to definitely adjust. So by understanding the hierarchy of the watches also makes you understand that if the watches which is in the luxury level, their price is slowly moving into the high-end luxury watches, the brand itself have to do something to maintain okay, their level in this hierarchy. And the best and fastest way is either you increase price or you reduce the production. Okay, So when you reduce the production, you will definitely increase price. And a lot of uh, watch brands, um, they are very, very good in manufacturing demands. Agree, a lot of watches are, hand, are handmade, but if you are a businessman, if you, your certain model is uh, running so well, why don't you increase the capacity of producing that particular model? So to me, sometimes in this industry, uh, you have to understand that uh, a lot of things is being manufactured, right? And then uh, I think... Uh, uh, Odoma has actually enjoyed a very steady growth uh, for the past few years. And uh, I think this recent years, their growth has slowed down as compared back in 2016, 2017, and 2018. Uh, for those who are actually uh, thinking of to purchase a high-end luxury watch uh, for investment, I think this brand now, you can actually have a look um, forget about getting the 41mm boutique uh, RO, which is Royal Oak. I, I think that one is, the price has actually doubled. I have the black color one. I didn't have the blue color one. Uh, the black color one, I actually bought a pre-owned at 51 grand. Uh, now maximum maybe it's about 70 plus. 
But the blue face boutique one that time was selling at a premium of about four or five grand compared to the black color one. Uh, now it's actually looking at about 115 to 118. It has almost doubled the price, more than double, right? But their Royal Offshore um, price has been very steady uh, 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 in the uh, scam market. And I think that is due to also the trend of the watch has actually changed. So this will actually touch into my next slides. So before you actually put in your money into a watch um, that you want to invest, it is actually very similar to stocks. You actually need to understand the trend of the stocks. Looking at TA, you must also understand the fundamental of the stocks itself, right? So uh, um, if you, if you if you really ask me that I can if I if I can remember correctly. Um, the price of Pate Philip um, actually went up so much is because there is a news somewhere around end, end of last last year that they are looking for a buyer, uh, which they claim is a fake news. Uh, to buy them out, there are some watch brands who are interested to buy out them because at this moment, there are only a few uh, brands who are standalone, which means that they are not under Swatch Group or Richmond Group or LVMH. So after that particular rumors, the price of actually basically all their watches actually move because people uh, is worried that they might not get a real original partake anymore, right? So Benny. Okay, um, so you, there's a question here uh, that asks about Rolex Batman. <laughs> um, okay. What, what do you think about Rolex Batman? Is, is it a good watch to invest in? Because I believe okay. it's not isn't it? I, I can I can I can seriously say that um, the if you really want to ask me the one single brand that represents uh, currency uh, in the watch industry, I can only say Rolex is the only brand that represents currency. So which means that you can just wear a Rolex, go to any pawn shop, not only in Malaysia, is anywhere around the world, you will be able to exchange your watch with cash. Okay, this is this is no joke, seriously, guys. And um, Rolex sports model, definitely yes. Uh, the answer is um, it is definitely an investor an investment grade model. So, Benny, you remember this afternoon uh, we are chatting about uh, whether the price of Rolex will go up or go down during this year because there's COVID, right? Um, I, I think I've shared with you that Rolex this year they have actually stopped their uh, production. Um, for almost, I think they started the production last year, last week, and sorry, last month. They haven't actually decided when actually they want to um, restart their production. And this year, uh, if guys, you know that uh, if you are already a watch collector, you might know that Basel World has cancelled their 2020 exhibition and moved to 2021. And two days ago, there is a very big news where at first the Swatch Group, which is Omega, pulled out from Basel World, and now uh, and then followed by Grand Seiko, Seiko pulled out from Basel World, and then uh, two days ago, uh, companies like Rolex, companies like uh, Cartier, and uh, companies like Chopin has also uh, uh, pulled out from Basel World, and Rolex uh, has announced that this year they will not launch any new product. So if you ask me, with um, with, without new product coming into the market, so investors are looking only at existing model, which is the bad girl and is not the Batman. Batman, I mean, it's a real stock, pro stock production. Um, Batman is the blue and black color blazer GMT Rolex. Okay, what I'm having here is a Pepsi, which is a 16750 vintage model. Um, Batman is the newer model of this GMT itself. Uh, Batgirl is actually the same model, but the bracelet is a Jubilee bracelet. It's not a uh, it's not an Oyster bracelet. So looking at no new models coming up from Seiko this uh, coming up from Rolex this year, and um, they have actually stopped their production like uh, a month plus ago. Um, the price of this uh, sports watches under Rolex uh, is going up. It's, it's, if you look at it, if if you have time. Just go online, just check out any of those pre-owned watches um, uh, website. You'll know that the price of those watches currently, um, uh, last year there is a bit of drop because due to the riot in Hong Kong, because Hong Kong is still the largest 
uh, uh, importer of a uh, uh, consumer of a uh, Swiss watch. But this year itself, you can see that all the price of Swiss watches has actually stable down and is on the trend of going up. So uh, hopefully I answered that question. Danny. Yeah, there's a there's a follow up question to this uh, because you know if you want to get all these collectors watch, especially the Rolex, you, you can't buy them at a watch anymore, right? And uh, how do you find them in the secondary market? Okay, you you see that um, um, before before actually a lot of people might have the wrong idea of uh, if today one day one day you have made it, um, you have collected enough money, you wanted to buy a Batman or a Batgirl or any model from a ro uh, the sports model from a Rolex watch. You thought that by walking in and flash out your credit card, you will be able to get a Rolex sports model. Uh, my answer to you is, it, sorry, it, it, uh, I'm talking about stainless steel sports model, right? If you think that this will happen, uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, you're going to be get, you're going to get very disappointed because first of all, even from the display, uh, um, shelf of Rolex in any part of the world, you won't see a single stainless steel sports model available for you to purchase. So most likely when you sit down, the sales girl or the sales advisor, they call, will entertain you and eventually ask you what model you want. So you, by the way, tell them the model that you want. And if you are very angry with them and say, that, why I have money and I can't get a watch from Rolex, then they know that you are a newbie because it is impossible at this point of time that you can get any Rolex stainless steel sports model. So usually they ask you to put down your name and the waiting list of a sports model uh, is actually easily one to two years. One year quite impossible. It's easily two years, right? And that is the reason why in the gray market or in the pre owned market, why the price of uh, the Rolex itself uh, can be higher than the authorized dealer. So if you want to buy, so many, this is a, this is a mindset that you understand. To buy a Rolex sports model stainless steel from an authorized dealer, the price is actually cheaper compared to the gray market outside. But it is impossible for you to buy from the authorized dealer because there is no stock and your waiting period is easily two years. So what a lot of collectors will do is they will just put down their name and they will take their money to a grey market and buy. And the premium of that sports model in grey market is about, like for example, SAP or GMT is easily a grand, easily a grand itself, right? So sometimes when you buy a very hot model, even after you wear it, if you buy from an authorized dealer, even after you wear it and you sell, you still make money. That is the reason behind because the demand itself is way, way, way much more than the supply. It's way much, way, way, way higher than the supply. Uh, so hopes, uh, hope it gives you some perspective of why people buy watches at Autorized Dealer and why people buy watches uh, in the gray market. Okay, so later you're going to share us the six steps, right? How to find a stock, uh, a watch which uh, likely going to go up in prices, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, um, I'll leave that at, uh, at last, lah. When you maybe when you explain, then you have a better idea that you probably ask more questions. Okay, so be before we go further, uh, commercial break, <laughs> right? Um, you know, in equity structure, we actually have uh, investment education, right? And you know what? Uh, we are during this COVID, uh, during this lockdown period, we actually came up with a foundation program in investments, and um, it's going to be for free, right? Um, all you need to do is to join our charity drive over here, uh, where all you need to do to attend this investment program, where you are able to access training videos uh, based on value investing principles and based on uh, price chart analysis. Uh, there'll be articles uh, about investments, there'll be tutorial videos and so on and so forth. Okay, all you need to do is to make a donation over here, right? Um, not over here, sorry. Make a donation anywhere, any charity you want to and keep the receipt, okay? Because we'll be asking you for the receipt that you, don you have donated. And once you have donated a minimum of 100 ringgit, you are able to bring along three more friends to join this program. And it's absolutely free, all right? So all you need to go, all you need to do is to go to charity, not equitystriker.com. All right. 
uh, we will put a comment down there on the comment section so that you are able to just click on that link you should be able to come here right so this is for charity we want basically because we understand that during this this period there are a lot of people who are unable to provide food on the table especially the daily wage workers right so this is what how uh, we all i mean uh, at equity striker where we all investors are able to give back to society right and in equity striker we are providing this free education for those who are interested and just make a donation to a charity all right so at the moment we have already collected about 110,000 ringgit that means we don't collect but you guys have donated about 110,000 ringgit through this initiative to various organizations all right so of course we have uh, extended uh, target at 250,000 and uh, you know once we reach 250,000 um, Dr. Michael has actually uh, promised to shave his hair bald so if you want to see him go bald you can uh, you can share this to as many friends as you can so that uh, to make this happen right because we want to make a difference and hopefully we'll show that investment is not all about making money but it's all also about charity all right so please join us Benny, you want 200,000 is Elvin right not me man uh, uh, 250,000 is you lah right <laughs> <laughs> I thought is both of us, right? Uh, 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 no, no, I think we go another topic. Lah. So we come back here again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, no, we only have about 10 minutes left. So um, what, what else would you want to present, uh, Dato? Okay, well, uh, one more slide. I think this one is the uh, very important slides that um tips to kickstart uh your start uh, to kickstart your uh, watch investment so first of all uh, if you do not like watches if you do not have passion into watches uh please don't don't start your watch investment don't start at all it's like if you don't like stocks don't buy stocks if you don't want to understand how does a stock works how does a right issue works how does a bonus issue works how does a dividend works how does a PE works if you do not have passion in watch first of all don't start uh, a watch investment. Second thing is you you have to understand the watch and the industry very very well before you go into uh, the watch investment. So if you ask me, um, the easiest way is through research, read as much article as possible, and then second thing you really really have to go to the market and buy some tricks, do some trick gains, gain some experience through the tricks itself, and then the last is actually the most important which is understanding the trend of the watch in the watch industry. So how do you actually understand the trend itself? It's, it's either by reading or by talking to people. I'll give a very, very good example. I think uh, almost close to uh, about maybe seven, eight years ago, uh, there is a trend, there's a shift of trend in watch industry where everybody is going for big watches. So there are, I believe there are, some, um, there are some hardcore fans in the group is asking uh what about Panerai? What about Panerai? Trust me, those days, if you want to buy a Panerai and you have money, you might not even get one Panerai. Because that particular era where big trend, big watches is in trend, everybody wants to have a chunky watch on their wrist. I personally I am not a big fan of a chunky watch. So at that particular time, um uh, watches that minimum uh, people would like to wear on their wrist is about 42 41 42 44 45 46 even up to some limited editions of um ap is 48 mm um that that era that trend itself is very very strong so if you have any watches sport watches below 40 or don't look chunky enough all right then you you might not be in the trend to make a good money so even like rolex also during that particular period of time they have actually created a 41 mm mm date just and they have actually also increased the look of their classic models like submariner like gmt okay they remain same as 40 but they make their luck thicker so the whole watch actually looks bigger and more chunky to suit the trend so at that particular of time if 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 actually i've done some i've done some very stupid investment as well i've uh sold off one of my pretty simple uh simple looking uh, uh um, rolex and actually went over to a very chunky uh forum itself so that watch i made miserable returns uh, I, I shouldn't do that so by understanding the trend um i think it's very important 
now the watch industry has gone back to the trend of 40 mm uh, for sports model and also for this is the good size for a modern watch so rolex uh, last year last one two years they have also downsized their they just to 40. so uh, understanding the trend itself is pretty important and also guys uh, a very simple tips is actually a lot of watches with blue dial um actually command better actually command better uh, uh returns so blue dial is very very um sought after uh in the watch collecting uh industry and also when it goes to chronometer i think you all might heard about this word called panda which the chronometer the chrono watch itself actually looks like the face of panda uh that that type of dial itself actually also will give you a better uh, resale value or helps you to sell it easier compared to those normal ones, right? So for point number three, first, if, if you want to make money from stock watch investment, you must be able to accept pre-owned watch. So there are some of my friends, it's like, no, mind, you don't talk to me about pre-owned watch. I totally do not want to wear a watch where uh, people worry before. I don't know who is the previous owner. Is he dead? Is he a bankruptcy? Is he a somebody? If you cannot accept pre-owned watch and you just want to buy only uh, 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 new watches from watch uh, uh, authorized dealer, uh, especially Rolex, I think it's pretty hard unless you have uh, been a very supportive customer, which means that you have actually bought a lot of watches over the years yes you have chance to actually get a brand new um uh, stainless steel sports watch after all the tan series data series or whatever or their their, 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 their their supporters right or else if you want to make money from watch investing you definitely need to accept a pre-owned watch so i'm going to show you a uh this is a pre-owned watch that i have if you can see it over here so it's a gmt who Rolex GMT2, uh, the model is uh, 171650M uh, one series, uh, is actually, uh, you can go and look at the, the, the age itself, uh, it's actually my, it's actually the, my, the, the, the birth year of, of mine. So I bought this watch from a um, pre-owned dealer in Malaysia itself, um, back two, three, two, three 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 two two to three years back itself uh when i bought this watch uh it doesn't actually comes with a full set but it comes with a rolex service receipt so which means that this watch has been sold to me prior to that the actually the seller has sent to rolex to actually do a maintenance of the watch and also to check whether the authenticity of the watch itself is all good so you can look at this watch itself. Um, you can see that the dials itself has actually grow uh, orange or, or yellow in color. I bought this watch close to about thirty eight thousand. Uh, at the peak of this watch, uh, in Japan, uh, is selling close to about seventy six grand. And now in Malaysia, uh, you will not get this watch below sixty grand. There's no way to get below sixty grand. It is definitely above 60, but in Japan, it is still commanding a very high premium. It is close to 80 grand. So I've actually almost close to about double or, or near to double of my investment uh, uh, for this watch. Um, the reason given behind is definitely you ask me uh, how do you spot this watch? It's, it's true research and true uh, understanding the trend because there is a very, very strong trend uh, in the watch industry now, people are chasing uh, vintage watches because vintage watches is not like new watches. It's not where you have money, you can buy a piece of what you want it. And that is why the reason why back in 2017, uh, the stainless steel Paul Newman was auctioned at a whooping price of 17 million US dollar. All right. So uh, this is something... Um, very interesting and then number four is uh always buy a watch with an exit strategy so when you want to buy a watch before you want to buy a watch yourself right before i go to the portfolio you must have a strategy that look i want to buy this watch because i want to make money then you will go and look for those models that can help you to make money 
But if you want to buy watches that to remember a certain special date, maybe um, for your wedding day, or maybe uh, you give birth to a baby, you wanted to buy something to celebrate that moment itself, then not necessarily you want to buy a watch that you can make money out of it, right? So I can, uh, I can show you another watch. I think this is a watch that Benny has seen me uh, having this for many, many years. Okay, this is a very extremely good uh, extremely good condition of uh, Monaco, um, full set itself. Um, I've gotten this watch at a pretty decent price many, many years ago from a collector. Uh, to be honest, I know the collector and he hasn't been wearing this watch since he purchased. So uh, if you ask me if I were to um, flip the watch today, um, easily um, my profit will be two to three times of what the purchase price that I have purchased previously. But, but too bad, I'm, I'm not selling it now. Previously, I've thinking of selling it uh, to one of my very good friends, but uh, I have decided to keep this watch. So uh, this this watch and itself, I've actually owned less than six years. All right? Friend is so, <laughs> yeah, Benny? Yeah, that friend is watching. <laughs> oh, he's, he's watching, uh, uh, yeah. Quietly watching. <laughs> okay. Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> All right. So, so, so that's for point number four, right? So for point number five, you need to build your contacts in the watch community for you to buy, for you to sell, and the most important is for you to maintain. Because before you actually sell a watch, you want to make sure that your watch is in tip-top condition. So you must actually get a very good um, seafood to help you to maintain your watch in terms of polishing your watch, in terms of actually making sure uh, your watches is being uh, 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 maintained with a tip-top condition before you want to sell it to any collector or to any shops. I, I think there are some guys uh, who is in tonight's uh, uh, webinar actually have bought some watches from me. I think maybe Leon, uh, he knows that before I sell any watches, I will definitely service the watch. And uh, sometimes if you do not have a good seafood to help you to service or maintain the watch itself, uh, the maintenance fee can be relatively high. It can take out a, a big chunk, a small, not, not a big chunk, it will take out a bit of your profit. But if you have a very good seafood who is there to actually help you, to support you, I, I think this is very, very important. And if you know some very good dealers to buy and sell your watches in, uh, in, in the watch community, you will actually get, not too bad, an additional 3 to 5% price difference. And I am not joking. The difference can be as huge as three to five percent. And uh, I'm talking about watches which is not few thousand; it's maybe forty thousand and above, right? So, last to build your watch portfolio, I think this is something. Um, this is something very, very hard to build. Uh, which means that there is a fight in your heart that some watches you want to buy is really not for making money. So I'm going to show you a few watches over here. So this is one um, watch that I bought it from a friend. Um, it is the reason why I bought this gold top um, Omega Seamaster Vintage is because uh, it, it was actually uh, on the guarantee card itself. Um, it was actually uh, manufactured uh, on my year of birth. So I have a GMT2 uh, and also uh, a another watch of this who actually um, was being uh, bought or manufactured by the uh, by by that particular year uh, where I was born because there is a sentimental value that I want to keep to myself uh, even though it's not for investment but again um, um, it depends on what you want so there is a small chunk of my watch portfolio the amount that I will spend to go and buy something that I really like for sentimental value, because I always joke with my friend and say, that, hey, maybe uh, let's see whether the watch die first or I die first in future. So, so I, I most guarantee I'll die first compared to the watch, right? So, so, so that's, that's some of the jokes that I've been joking. And um, um, if, if you really ask me, uh, it really boils down to what actually uh, you want, Benny. Okay, so I mean, for, for me, I uh, you know me, like, I only collect Seiko watches, right? Um, uh, maybe you can have a, a, a 
uh, vintage Seiko watches. I'm not the new Seiko watches, right? So uh, I'm just going to ask you a question. I mean, uh, I mean, ask the audience a question, right? Maybe uh, Fais, you can show me. Uh, can display the screen over here. Now, um, <laughs> if you look at this watch, right? I just basically want you to guess how much is this watch, right? So just type it down in the comment section. Um, this watch here really run down like crazy, but uh, how much do you think it is? All right. Okay, Dato, you want to have any, anything else? There's a question here, right? If there's, uh, there's a guy who has about 5,000 to 10,000 ringgit, uh, which one would, uh, which which uh, stock or uh, which watch would you want to start first? It didn't be specific. Okay, uh, before I go, okay, um, if, you, if, you really, if you really ask me if your amount of money is ranging from 5 to 10 grand, you might, you, you might put all into just one Swiss watch or you might put it into a few collectible Japanese watch. I think if Benny and myself, we have a very clear answer. Uh, I think both of us will go for a vintage Japanese watch, right? Because um, actually from five to 10 grand itself, it is pretty hard for you to get a very, uh, uh, it's pretty hard, it, there's, there isn't much choice for you, right, in the market. So it's either you get, if you are okay with a mechanical winding watch, as I mentioned in my last episode, uh, look at this Rolex 6694. Uh, if you do not like a mechanical winding watch, then look for a Rolex 15,000, 1500 itself, 1500. Uh, it's a very, it's an entry level, non quick set, uh, 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 automatic uh, Rolex uh, dress watch size at about 34 plus, 34, 34.5. It is a very elegant and simple dress watch. And I can guarantee you the price of this watch will definitely go up because uh, first of all, it's getting rare, it's getting very, very rare in the market. And second thing, uh, at this moment, I have no, I've never seen a counterfeit mechanical Rolex watch in the market, which means it's, it's, it's pretty safe for you to get a uh, genuine um, um, mechanical uh, Rolex watch in the market at this point of time, right? And also, if you are looking at um, Japanese watches, that one is a whole new chapter that if you want to go into that, I think Benny and myself, we can talk for more than one hour because I think Benny, you have seen how crazy the price has gone, okay? Mm -hmm. You have seen actually how crazy the price has gone. Um, some watches that both of us purchase it at maybe like two, three hundred ringgit or three, four hundred ringgit. Now it's selling almost like eight, nine hundred. And I've uh, spoken to one uh, collector this afternoon. He told me that he sold his double seven at thousand one ringgit. This is uh, this is a new price to me. So 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 that one, uh, Benny, I think that one you need really another topic. I, I think it's pretty hard to share all. Uh, that part today but if you want to go to a very fast one maybe that, that next page is a preview of what what a japanese watch is okay we, we probably don't have time it's already 9 907 so because we've got a mandarin session in a short while right so uh, for those who are guessing that watch that watch is not a rolex watch uh, that watch is actually a seiko first diver watch right and um that to this watch remember it's a 62 mas right um, yes how correct. Was it? five years ago Oh, that, that, if you're talking about 62 mass is a crazy watch. Uh, mm -hmm. I have actually started to catch, I uh, wanted to catch this 62 mass, um, actually it's three years ago. I have been seeing the price of this watch from 2.6 onwards. I, I, I'm still bargaining 2.6, 3K, whether I should buy, whether I should, whether I don't buy. If you do not have a minimum of 4.5k today, you won't be able to get the watch. So the price has actually doubled um, by about two, three years time. And some of those with very good conditions, it can fetch up to 5.5 thousand um, penny. Yeah. You're talking about US dollar or you're talking about ringgit? Oh, no, 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 sorry. I'm talking about ringgit Malaysia. Okay. If you're talking about US dollar, Benny, if you go to, if you go to eBay, I think you will fall off the chair. Uh, yeah. If you convert, it's going to be about 8,000 ringgit. Yeah, I had more than that because remember I we wanted to go and search this watch. This is like the holy grail of Seiko watches, right? The first yeah. time first diver yeah, watch yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. above 10k, right? It's, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. Yeah. Right, all right. Yeah, just, just to give you an idea, if you can go to my screen. Um, this is <laughs> I'm just gonna share with you a little bit, like, right? Uh for example, uh this watch here, I mean this, the one that I just showed you earlier, uh it's only cost like 150 ring uh, dollars, and this was four years ago, right? On uh on a carousel. 
all right and uh, this watch like michael said just jumped out so much because of this movie right <laughs> this this is by brad pitt this is a hollywood right um talk about the old time and th that's where you see this this watch as well right uh, sorry this one yes um if you check on ebay this watch now is selling about seven about six seven hundred dollars dollars right from seeing dollar hundred plus now it's uh, seven hundred dollars right and and another famous watch like this for example this is like this is the old turtle uh went by martin sheen in uh, the movie Ap apocalypse right um this watch i mean in malaysia last time it was only like uh you know less than a thousand it's a few hundred bucks isn't it uh Bato? yeah yeah those days were yeah. report maybe close about 800 bucks only yeah it's, it's crazy so i mean we have been i mean i've been searching I, i'm a little bit late in the game so um i still get this thing about i think about two thousand ringgit, ringgit and that time is really considered quite expensive right yeah yeah it is it is look at this if you go to ebay if you go if you really can go to the international market all right it's now like 2008 to 2005 right so like you said that um that too, I, I think i agree with you number one i think you, you if you follow the six steps right that uh you want to go to watch investment then you really need to have a passion uh you really need to like what you're doing you know look at vintage watches and don't mind you are wearing secondhand watches and so on right um so i mean so for for a person who want to start right so this is the last question now huh? who want to start uh in investing uh or start at least you know maybe they cannot buy rolex first uh, because maybe it's too expensive uh but what what kind of watches should they consider um swiss brand or japanese brand uh, it can be any brand now so let's say this guy like you say you want to start with only five thousand ringgit uh, okay if you if you if you're talking about five grand as i mentioned just now you can actually go and get just one rolex itself or you can actually go to japanese um like seiko's you can have a good choice now of some very you can either get a uh you can either get a seiko 7 um 702 or i, I still think that you try to get a slim case try to get a slim case 6139 um seiko diver so it's a very simple it's a very very uh, rugged looking watch uh if you can still get it at below um um, um below five five no five grand below 500 try to buy as many as possible because the price now in the market has actually shot up to easily about 600 to 700 ringgit um and try maybe to get to collect as much um chronograph as possible uh for a rolex watch i think benny has been collecting a lot of chronograph singles and the price of the chronograph singles have shut up the, the roof is it's, it's crazy the, the price i think benny has been getting maybe about also about four five hundred or five six hundred chronograph singles and uh, nowadays um all the chronograph singles is above thousand ringgit i think benny has easily doubled whatever he has bought in the past two years and also uh if you are a if you have a bit more budget, if you want to go into some uh, Rolex standard steel sports model, uh, try to get a few. Um, I've actually purchased this uh, 40 year uh, Kermit, uh, Rolex 40 years Kermit, which is a black dial with a green bezel itself. Um, about maybe two years ago, uh, below 40 or just 40. Uh, at this point of time, this watch, if you want to sell or you want to buy, you will not get anything below 55. So, so, so this watch itself, I've made quite a lot. So if for Rolex, if you can try to look for this Kermit because there is a news that they are going to launch the new Kermit. A second thing, I personally, I'm also chasing two more Rolex watches. One is actually a pre-owned Sky Driller. Uh, because sky driller looking at the mechanism itself it is the most complicated and sophisticated engine that uh rolex has created now um i won't oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, still uh um sky driller. i'm looking at a, the rolexer rolexer means it's a um goal uh it's a half goal rolex um currently now a full set you are looking at about 60 over thousand uh and also i'm actually hunting a dj uh, they just 41 uh mm which they have totally stopped production um uh, i think that um this is a long run i'll keep this watch for at least five to ten years uh, at this moment um the price has actually increased quite a lot but i still think that this is a good uh, investment so that's that's my personal thought 
hopefully one day in the Avengers Incredible Hulk where they watch and then the, the price will just jump double lah. Ah, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe one last question yeah. because we only have one lady actually who's asking about question here, right? Um, of all the guys, um, which which uh, lady Rolex watch should they consider if um if you want to buy one? <laughs> All right, Benny. So, okay, for ladies, I think that um, this question is very valid. If you really want to get from Rolex for ladies, I suggest you to get a uh, lady stress watch with diamonds. With diamonds, okay. Um, the, the reason is pretty simple because uh, uh, um, lady diamonds are ladies' best friend. All right, but if ladies, if you, you can carry a man watch or if you can carry a sports model, I think you should actually uh, buy a Rolex sports model and uh, that will give you a very good return. But if you want to buy a dress watch, get a stainless steel or a uh, do not invest in a full gold watch. All right, do not invest, even ladies, do not invest in a full gold watch. Benny. All right. I I think I think it's your I think it's your mic, man. No, no, it just automatically started going mute. Anyways, uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Thank you, Dato, for uh, your explanation on these uh, watches on uh, the six steps that you've given us. Um, till we meet again, uh, everyone have a good evening, and we have our Mandarin session going on right now at nine fifteen. So please do join us in our Mandarin session. Um, thank you very much, and have a good evening. Thanks, Benny. Bye. Right, bye, see you.